There's a review of Babylon in the Bible. It says, Babylon, the great mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. Bit of a one-star review that, to be honest. But nevertheless, here I am traveling south through the desert from Baghdad and very excited to get my first view of the Ishtar Gate. Not the real one, unfortunately. That is in the Pergamon Museum in Berlin. A travesty, really, but at least it's avoided the conflicts of Iraq's recent past. You may have noticed by now that despite this being one of the wonders of the classical world, there is almost nobody here. One day maybe that will change. Babylon has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 2019, finally reflecting its historical importance as one of the world's greatest ever cities, as conceived by Nebuchadnezzar II after he took the throne in 604 BC. The great city of majestic hanging gardens and the Tower of Babel. Looking upon his achievements, Nebuchadnezzar was not a humble man. The death of Alexander the Great here in 323 BC marked the end of Babylon's period of power and decadence. It soon fell into ruins and remained largely forgotten until archaeologists arrived in the late 19th century. Then, in the 1980s, Saddam Hussein ordered its reconstruction on top of the ancient ruins. Nearly 4,000 years of history. Wow. Running for nearly one kilometre from the site of the original Ishtar Gate, this is known as the Street of Procession. It must have been one hell of a sight back in the day. Actually, here's the place of uh, original Ishtar Gate. One of Ishtar Gate was here, and there is many animals on the wall. You can recognize it here in this area. And UNESCO uh, trying to reconstruction uh, this uh, site. The reliefs are beautiful. For its period, you can only imagine how incredible this would have seemed to anyone who passed through the gate. Actually, all of these uh, palace, all of this building, the wall, it is not original, but it's similar for the original. Actually, Saddam Hussein uh, has been built this uh, palace, uh, and you can find uh, many wall on the wall. He wrote his name to try to leave his name on the wall forever. So this is all about Saddam Hussein positioning himself with Nebuchadnezzar, or indeed above Nebuchadnezzar. Exactly, he thought himself it's better than Nebuchadnezzar and Hammurabi, whatever, so that he also chosen the balas, his balas, it's above for Babylon. Saddam was copying Nebuchadnezzar, whose own name can be found imprinted on some of the original bricks. The Saddam bricks say, In the reign of the victorious Saddam Hussein, the President of the Republic, may God keep him the guardian of the great Iraq and the renovator of its renaissance and the builder of its great civilization, the rebuilding of the great city of Babylon in 1987. I think we have found the Lion of Babylon. Now the lion is over a thousand years old, but the damage is actually 
a lot more recent, we think. Yeah, actually, the people here said uh, the Earth, the Earthmen tried to take uh, this uh, the line of Babylon with them. They cannot because it's very heavy, so they shooting him and breaking uh, here and here, and the noise, the noise, are so broken. Well, luckily, the Ottomans or whoever they were didn't succeed. Babylon! You enjoyed that, didn't you? Yeah, this is really <laughs> enjoying when you say something, it's your back. It's in a different feel. Here we have the recreation of Nebuchadnezzar's throne room, giving us just an idea of what it might have been like. The coolest place to be in Babylon on a day like today in the recreation of the underground warehouse used back in the day for animals, food, probably almost anything really to keep it out of the sun. The site is vast and much of it is still unexcavated and unprotected due to lack of funds. Both Saddam and US troops caused damage to the site during their respective occupations, as well as common thieves and vandals. From one formidable leader to another, but this one is less fondly remembered. Whilst the general population of Iraq languished in poverty, Saddam Hussein decided to build a series of palaces, none more impressive or repulsive, depending on your point of view, than this overlooking Babylon and built on many of the ruins themselves. Normally for uh, Saddam Hussein interview war with the officers, he was just was sitting here and the officer came from here to stop here and to make a great for Saddam Hussein like something like that. Two lifts that are only going down. To build this ostentatious palace, a whole village was destroyed and the height of the hill increased. In fact, it's not known if Saddam ever stayed here, but the American military certainly did. It's now a ruined shell, a blot on the landscape serving no purpose. Now I know what you're thinking, where is the swimming pool? Oh dear. At least the proposed funicular from this palace across the ruins to Nebuchadnezzar's palace never saw the light of day. There's clearly no defence to building an ostentatious palace or running an army base on top of ancient ruins. But the reconstruction of the walls themselves, well, they do give us an insight into what ancient Babylon looked like. However, it is of course a crime against archaeology to build on top of ancient ruins. So it should never have happened. Imagine building on top of Pompeii. That's all from Babylon. If you've enjoyed this film and want to see more films about Iraq, then please subscribe to the channel. I'll see you again.